Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2, where today we've got more space travel ahead of us. Last time we gained access to the moon, and also dealt with a lot of these evolved mobs. <laughs> we also took a trip to the red planet, and visited Mars. And between episodes, all of these waypoints that I have marked here is a lot of these dungeons that I've looted. And uh, yeah, check out the yield we got from these things. <laughs> so this was just like, I don't know, 20 minutes of looting. So all of this stuff will come in very handy for us today. I also went back to the emptiness dimension from Thongcraft, and we got a couple of nice things from that as well, including an impetus cell and a few more primordial pearls. And using some of the Mars loot, I actually invested in our second blood altar over here and took this up to tier 6 by crafting up these crystal clusters. This is so that we're capable of producing the rainbow slates, which have to be made in a tier 6 blood altar. And we were running kinda low on these, we had a, a big backlog to start the chapter on, but these are used in all the rainbow tablets. Um, I mean, not that we need them for rainbow tablets anymore, but... <laughs> So yeah, our first goal for today is to reach Venus, and for that we have to craft our tier 3 rocket. We are going to need a 1 heavy nose cone, 4 heavy rocket fins, and 1 rocket engine. Well, the nose cone is very easy, we have this already. The rocket fins, let's see if we can request 4 of these things. We're missing some melodic alloy. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> I was messing with some of the passive processes, and I suspect it's still filling buffers up actually. Okay, I tweaked some things with our setups, now can we request this? Yeah, nice. And the last part we need for the rocket is the engine, of course, which requires this beam core. And this is a combination craft, we actually need these later on for Draconic Evolution. And they're not too difficult to make actually, it just requires some blood magic cores and condensed V-crystals. So we only need one for the moment, but I'm going to craft up 10 of these things, just so that we have them in the future. Alright, and 10 beam cores, it looks like our heavy rocket fins have finished crafting. We can request our rocket engine. Oh, and we also need another two tier one boosters for this. All right, so we got our schematic from the dungeon in Mars last episode. We can come over to the NASA workbench and unlock the tier three rocket. And this is capable of taking us to Venus. Oh, no quest though. <laughs> yeah, we're missing this other preparation quest over here, which is to upgrade our armor. So right now we have the thermal pad in set. So we have to make some of this isothermal fabric and we can easily upgrade our armor with this. How do we look this time? <laughs> I think I like this one more than the original set. So this rocket is actually capable of taking us to two different planets here. But first we have to discover those planets again. So we've got a research paper for Venus. We have to use our telescope once again and magically discover the planet. <laughs> there we go, we've discovered Venus and we're in the process of researching the asteroid belts. And finally we'll have to make sure that we fuel up our rocket. Oh that's a cool looking rocket. <laughs> I like that one. So with the preparations made, armor is upgraded, <laughs> that zombie's having a good time under there. Let's go to Venus. In 3, 2, 1. We have liftoff. <laughs> oh, this booster looks awesome, look at that thing. We got our quest. Very cool looking planet. This reminds me of Aurelia actually. Deploy the parachutes. Hopefully this is a more smooth landing than the Mars one. Yeah, not bad, not bad. <laughs> Alright, we got our gateway set up for Venus, which should secure us a way back home. And our first quest here is to once again find the Venus dungeons. I'm not sure what they look like though, they could be underground. Oh, I think we found one. This looks like our Venus dungeon. I would assume so anyway. <laughs> well, this is an interesting looking structure. Let's see what we got inside. Oh, many, many spawners. Let's get rid of these guys <laughs> before things get way too crazy again. Oh, looks like we have a choice here. Middle, left, or right. Hmm, let's go left. Oh, we got our first chests. Let's see if we got any unique loot in here. Okay, this is another maze, and you know me with the mazes, so... <laughs> uh, looks like we got a treasure door here. We do need a key for it, though. Oh yeah, all these corridors are starting to look all the same. I'm already lost as well. <laughs> Oh, this might take me a while, actually. Hey, at least we're getting more rainbow tablets here. Yep, I'm definitely lost in here. I've been spinning in circles for the past 10 minutes. Oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, we got some uh, cow trophies here. Oh, and we also came across this sulfuric acid. I think this was actually part of the quests. Let's grab a bucket of this. I think we'll be putting that to use later on. 
But for now, just to find the boss room. Somewhere. <laughs> this is more dead ends everywhere. This way? Oh, there's a secret room in here, though. Oh, look at this. I almost fell for this as well. <laughs> we have a spectral platform, which goes down, I think, into lava somewhere here. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> There's zombies in here having a, a whale of a time. That's sneaky. Oh, I think this is a credit room. This is the, the guys who made the dungeon. Yeah, that's cool. And they left us some cake as well. <laughs> Let's take that with us. I want you to take a moment to look back. Back at the dimensions you've travelled through. Back at the start of your base, the spawning area where you fell down. The first tree you punched. The first stone you mined. Oh man, it seems so long ago. <laughs> oh, let's take the sword as well. Anyways, to the boss room. Okay, I'm running around in circles again. <laughs> it's been like 20 minutes in here. I think I've looted all the chests by now. Like, our backpack is almost full of stuff. But uh, I'm running into all of the same corridors here. Okay, you know what? It's possible that I'm missing something very, very obvious in that maze, but I've been in there for so long now. <laughs> We're just going to cheese this with some chorus. And I think this is the boss room in here. Yeah, there's the boss door, which was where we were below this. Let's see the dungeon boss. Oh, another zombie. Oh, we're in half a hurry. <laughs> Why is this guy so fast? Okay, I'm holding right click and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> He's way too quick for us. I wonder if the bow's better. Nope, bounces off him. Wait, does that work? Oh yeah, this is definitely the way to go. It does have, oh, he has 5,000 HP. Let's see if we can box him in fully, actually. Oh, he got out, he got out. <laughs> Wait, he might be trapped here. Oh, he got him, he's trapped. Take that. <laughs> okay, now we just hold right click. And we got him. <laughs> nice. Oh, and he has the treasure door key as well. Yeah, let's go find that treasure below. Oh no, but we need the, the boss door key. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, we need the boss door key for the quest. Okay, found our way back to the treasure door. Fragment of the sun. I assume we'll need these for later on. Alright, we do really have to find that key though. <laughs> I don't want to skip up the quest. Uh, Where could this thing even be? Maybe the augment spell would be able to help us here. Hold on. Hold on. Is it right above us here? No, it's just more loot. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, had to go back to refill the oxygen levels. But uh, before we head back to that Venus dungeon and go insane again in that maze, <laughs> let's set up our builder on Venus just so that we can get this going. There's a couple of ores that we need from here. So we have to find them, first of all, so that we can add them to the filter. This all looks like regular copper. We're looking for solar ore. Oh, and also some of this stuff. Yeah, volcanic rock. Ah, here's some. Looks like it spawns at really low Y levels. All right, so we set the filter for solar and Venus volcanic rock. I don't think there's any other resources we need from here. Set it in our quarry and go. Oh, this is giving us soft rock. Oh no, <laughs> here we go with this filter again. I can never tell if this is blacklist or whitelist. Okay, I think it's just the way that these blocks are handled within the game. So we're just gonna have a void upgrade for these because otherwise it's actually, it's pulling up all of these regular ores and things that we really don't need, so. We had the same problem last time on the moon. Yeah, I tried like every configuration of that filter. <laughs> but this should give us our solar ore in here. Okay, we're back at the dungeon. But look what we just found. I just so happened to use this augment spell again. Where was that room? Oh no, I've lost it again. Oh, I think we found it. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Is it above here maybe? Yeah, there's the boss door key, finally. Alright, so not a bad yield actually from Venus. We got tons and tons of Batania runes. Lots of plating as well. Alright, so checking back on our quest here. We are still waiting on the builder for some of this ore. We actually picked up the fragments of the sun. So that leaves this quest over here, which is to visit the asteroids. So I think for the last time here, we are go for launch. <laughs> I did already discover the planet with the telescope. Well, it's technically not a planet we're going to. We're going to the asteroid belt. Ah, yeah, we do see an option here for asteroids now. Let's launch. I'm curious to see what this exactly looks like. Oh, this is cool. This is awesome. There's our quest. Mark the rocket again. And grab our celestial gateway. So yeah, the reason we want to be here is for two different resources. The first one being titanium. 
And the second is for this meteor chunk, which I think is in one of these lit up ones. Now there is a lot of mobs on here. <laughs> Let's see if there's anything inside here. Oh yeah, those mobs are fighting amongst themselves. That's fine. <laughs> oh, they're all shooting each other. It's going to win. This guy took it. Oh, now he's fallen. See ya. <laughs> is there anything in here? Uh oh, information. Oh, have we got more puzzles to do here? Uh, I think we may actually. <laughs> okay. Okay, there's actually numbers here. Let's make make note of these. One, nine. Oh, and this is the door down here. Okay. After pressing the button, turn around and look down. You need to remember the order of blocks appearing. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So the order is left to right, top to bottom. And I guess it's when we're facing this way. So it's two, eight, one, nine. I already forgot. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, I think I got the order written down here in chat. It does give us some paper to work with. Okay, nine digits. I think this is right. And then hit the button. Did that take the paper? It didn't take the paper. Uh... <laughs> okay, second try. It gave us the fragment, nice. I was one digit off here, I think. Okay, we got a second puzzle. You need to find all five digits hidden in the dungeon. Then rename the piece of paper. Okay, so this must be the numbers that we saw earlier. All right, let's come back to that puzzle. There is a, f a third and a fourth. Oh, there's the five digit there. There's no signs telling us what to do this time. Oh, we have to make all these light up. Oh, and <laughs> okay. Um, that lights those three up. Oh, it switches them all about. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to be hitting buttons forever. Oh, we got it. We got it. <laughs> Nice, I was just randomly hitting buttons there. Okay, the next one looks like some sort of sand puzzle. Oh, do we have to push the sand into that little square over there? Push it with this one. No, wait, this piston first. And then pull from here. Push to the side. Nice, there's our third fragment. And the fourth one is all the digits. So we have four here, nine, one above, five, I think we're missing another two digits somewhere. Oh, there's one. That's sneaky. <laughs> seven. I think there's only five numbers this time. So it's one, four, five, seven, nine. Nice, there's our fragments, which I'm assuming we have to craft to the key. And we open the center door. The asteroid keeper. Oh, it's a skeleton this time. With another 5,000 HP. <laughs> Let's trap him actually. Let's see if we can trap him anyway. Oh, this guy is quick. Okay, we must be close now. You can't have much HP. 78 left. There we go. <laughs> nice, there's our chunks of meat here. So yeah, I think now we're just looking for titanium, which should be in all of these regular generated asteroids. Let's see if there's any in the middle of this. Oh, there's some diamond here. Maybe each asteroid contains a different vein, so to say. This one might be just a diamond asteroid. Let's try a different one. Nothing inside, <laughs> just rocks. Oh, we got another diamond one here, but this is like the 20th asteroid that I've mined through. And still no titanium. Oh look, you can even see the earth from here. It's absolutely tiny, but <laughs> you can see it. Oh, we got some. We got some Elmanite ore. Oh, there's quite a lot of it here even. Over two stacks? Over three stacks. And now that we have a little bit of this, we can actually set a filter on the digital miner and we can just let this thing pull it up for us. And this way it'll be much easier to find uh, future asteroids in case we need any more of this stuff. All right, so we got the Elmanite ore. We have to find a way to process this now. So again, we can get three ingots from Starlight and Fusion. The enrichment chamber gives us two dust per. Let's see, we don't have any grinding ball outputs on the sag mill. I wonder if fortune works actually on this thing. Two titanium shards, two iron shards from this. Yeah, we just get two per with the fortune. I think our best bet here is actually to use tectonic initiation. So we do have this pulverizer set up for our tectonic petrothium, which will give us the titanium dust. And I think this is configured just to send it all back to our ME system. Yeah, it looks like it goes right back into that interface there. So in fact, what we can do is filter this into this interface, the ilmenite ore that is, and then also into the pulverizer. And I wonder, do we get titanium seeds later on? We do get titanium seeds and they're tier five as well. So we're actually not too far away from this either. So at this point, actually, we're just missing this quest over here and the one for the solar. Oh yeah, we're at nearly 300 solar ore, nearly 600 volcanic rock. We're just missing this web string, which we apparently have to find here on Venus again. 
and we are looking for one of the Galacticraft dungeons this time. Ah, here we go. It's red brick this time rather than green. Interesting. I wonder what sort of weird boss we're going to get at the end of this one. <laughs> ah, yeah, here is our web string. And we meet the spider queen. <laughs> There's a way easier boss than the other one. Oh, she goes invulnerable a second time. Oh, you're only delaying the inevitable here. <laughs> he gave us our dungeon key. I don't think we're looking for anything specific out of this thing. Volcanic pickaxe. Not much else here though. Yeah, we're just interested in this web string. Alright, so we got our web string, which we then used to create this hyperglued meteoric casing, which I'm hoping is just a one-time craft. <laughs> but I did already go ahead and put all the materials for this together. This takes some of our meteor chunks that we found after we done the puzzle, along with the web string and titanium boxes, which takes uh, regular titanium plates, which we can just make in the compactor, compressed titanium, which is made in the compressor, and heavy duty plates tier 3 to give us the titanium boxes. And that allowed us to craft the hyperglued meteor casing. And there's no uses for this thing other than to use facades, but <laughs> um, I guess we'll find out soon enough what it's used for. Our next steps though is to use some of our solar that we got from Venus and craft it into solar ingots. However, this is not just a simple smelting recipe. We have to use our liquid crafter here. However, before we do the solar ingot recipe, we have to first empower the solar dust, which is where the volcanic rock comes in. And we have to mix that with solar dust which we get from the ore, and I've also filtered it into this pulverizer to give us three dust per with the petroleum. And then we have to combine that with two fluids, sulfuric acid, which we found in the dungeon, and also purifying fluid from Thomcraft. Normally this is used to get rid of warp, which I actually did pick up from the emptiness that I mentioned yesterday. Um, but, oh, and speaking of warp, <laughs> well, that was perfect timing. Well, not really, because these mine spiders are, man. <laughs> oh, Thomcraft. So to make our purifying fluid, I actually slightly modified a setup that was over in this corner. And this used to be for flux, however we do have flux seeds now. So to make the purifying fluid, we have to throw in bath salts, which we get from the crucible. And this is Salus Mundus plus a bunch of aspects. And that will convert water into purifying fluid. So this is an on-demand setup actually. And we have a recipe in the interface with the input being bath salts, and the output just being a blank piece of paper that I've renamed so that we can request this in the ME system. So if we request this piece of paper, it will send one of these bath salts into the dropper, where it drops it into the water. In a few seconds, change it into the purifying fluid. And I did add a bit of a delay on the, on the fluid reader there, just to help with the TPS. Actually, maybe the delay is a little bit long. Let's, <laughs> let's decrease this a little bit. Okay, the bath salts is in there. Convert it to the purifying liquid. Okay, it did pick it up. Yeah, now we have four buckets in our ender tank. So yeah, the way we have this set up is the fluid collector is set to pulse mode, so it will only pick up on a redstone signal. And this redstone writer back here will send a redstone signal if the fluid in this block space does not equal water. And then the mechanical user will place the eternal water bucket whenever the block space is equal to no fluid, basically. So now, as for the sulfuric acid, since we only got a couple of buckets of this stuff, rather than going back to Venus every time we need sulfuric acid, because I have a feeling we'll be doing this recipe quite a bit, there is actually a duplication recipe using some of this crystallized sulfur, and this will turn half a bucket into a full bucket. So we can put in our sulfuric acid and some crystallized sulfur, which we actually have on passive. It's used in, I think, the life crystals maybe, and this will output double the sulfuric acid input. Which for now we're going to recycle back into the input. And instead of the sulfur input, we're going to put in our solar dust and the volcanic rock, along with our purifying bath salts and sulfuric acid, which should now be processing down. And this gives us our empowered solar dust. Let's just do all of the bath salts we have here. I think we have four buckets. All right, so we've empowered our solar dust. We now have to combine it with these materials to make solar ingots. Let's come back to the item inputs in a second though. Uh, we do have two more fluids that we have to deal with here. The first one is actually creoso oil, which we have quite a big buffer of here. We may want to increase this though. But actually, let's just request a couple of ender tanks so that we can easily transport it over to our liquid crafter. Or actually, we have a fluid storage bus on the bottom of this tank. So what we're instead going to do is temporarily hook up a fluid terminal here, which will let us see all the fluids we have in our ME system, one of which being creoso oil. And I think we can just pull directly from this. Yeah, we can just fill buckets of this stuff. And eventually, once we have access to the tier 5 seeds, we will be building more liquid crafters to dedicate one per recipe, I think is what we're going to be doing. Or at least one per fluid type. But they are still very expensive for us, so <laughs> we'll just have the fluids here available to us to craft with. 
But yeah, the other fluid we have to look at here, other than the creosote oil, is protein, which is going to be made in the protein reactor from industrial foregoing. And I think we'll just reuse the spot that we used to have our blood infuser in. So we need our protein reactor, we give it some power, and we give this some raw meat. Yeah, we have 18 millibuckets of protein. I wonder if there's any more efficient yields out of this thing, actually. We have a few different input item options here, but I think all of them give us 80 millibuckets each. And the input we're going to pick here is raw pork chops. And I knew there was a reason we should be farming pig essence. <laughs> so yeah, this will infinitely generate us pork chop, which we can filter into the interface next to the protein reactor. And we will of course give this some speed and energy upgrades, which gives us the protein fluid. And we'll store this in an output tank as well. In fact, let's just add a filter just for safety. And all we need now is a fluid storage bus underneath here. Assuming we have enough channels on this line. I really hope we do. <laughs> nice, device online. And why not just upgrade the tank? Oh, and I just realized here that we can actually increase the maximum efficiency of this thing by actually feeding it different items and not just the one raw pork chop item. So, I mean, we might as well fil filter in raw beef and chicken as well. We have chicken essence and also cow essence. And we can actually also do rabbit here as well. Oh, and sheep. So I came back and changed this crafter over to a 2x2 two two drawer and switched out the crafter to tier 2 so that we can create the various different raw meats that we have here. So this brings us up to at least 50% efficiency. And we could go crazy here. I mean, we're producing over 120 millibuckets per item, up from 80. But I don't think we need that much protein. <laughs> we're already up to 13 buckets. And this is going to be passive, so this will run basically forever. Alright, so that gives us both fluid inputs. We also have to work out the item inputs. And actually, most of these things are not too bad. We have Hellfire on demand. These angelic silicon blocks we made way back in chapter 15, I think. We have plenty of silicon from the Mars loot, and we have a lot of these well crystals. In fact, I'm curious, how much of those are we on by now? Oh wow, 20k of each, at least. <laughs> so even though we're not hooking up the liquid crafter to 82 yet, we can still encode a pattern for this. Although we are actually missing this solar array panel, I don't think we've made this thing yet. We'll have to add recipes for this. So we can now go ahead and put in the solar ingot recipe into this interface, which will dump all of the input items into this chest. Let's see if we can request this. Hopefully I didn't miss any recipes. Oh, we're missing the empowered solar dust, which is in here. Has to craft a condensed ignis crystal, which has to go through the runic matrix, I think. But eventually should send all the items to here, along with our protein and creosote. And we're processing. Awesome. <laughs> so we have to do this many, many more times. However, we have our first solar ingots. Which, yeah, opens up this quest here. Oh, this is a molly block. Oh, I didn't expect this. Oh, and this is what our hyperglued meteor casing is for. Okay, hold on. What is that? What actually is this thing? Oh, this is the laser focus. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, this... Uh, this gives us access to tier 5 seeds. So we have things like end steel. What else do we have here? Oh, we can make the dragon egg seeds. Oh no, this is tier 6. Alchemical brass, cold iron, terra steel, thomium, void metal. Oh man, this is exciting. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves though. We first have to craft this. <laughs> and this is a lot of components to look for. Hey, we can at least make the machine blueprint. <laughs> okay, first step is done. A machine controller? That's also easy. Yep, one of those, no problem. Most of the stuff for this is actually on passive. There's our machine controller. Alright, what's next? Another stack of reinforced machine cases. Oh man. Okay, we're short 2000 stardust for this. Um, Yeah, that is that is a lot of galactic ingots to craft. Let's see how much ludicrate we can actually get though. Can we make a stack of ludicrate? We can make a stack of blocks. That's going to get us pretty close at least. Let's make sure we still have grinding balls in the sag mill. Turn all of this into ingots. Where it should be made into ore. And then process down in the sag mill. And gives us our stardust. Alright, that is going to take a little bit. Let's see what else we need here. 44 lead sheet metal slabs. Which should be very simple to craft. Ah, this is where we use some of our Venus loot as well. We need 7 portions of the sun. Which uses the fragments of the sun. Luckily this does give us 5 at a time. Along with our solar ingots. So this will require us to make one more craft of the solar ingots. We have 5 already. But yeah, we need 7 of these things. And these solar ingots will continue to be manual for some time, I suspect, until we get more of these liquid crafters. We just need protein and creosote oil. And we're off. Eight more solar ingots, nice. The other part here that we don't have yet is some firebox casings. I thought these were machine vents, but these are actually different items to the other multi blocks that we have. But these take blocks of blaze quartz. Oh, interesting. We should have some of that buffered though. Shock absorbers is double compressed obsidian and empowered void. And then tier 3 heavy duty plates. Yeah, we can do the rest of this. 
So nine firebox casings. We're short some blaze quartz, but that's just because we're only buffering a stack. All right, so I think I've gathered all the stuff that we can get at the moment. This reinforced glass casing is something else that threw me off guard. So for four of these things, we need nearly 340 stardust, and that's gonna take a while to process. I'm also quite glad I went and raided the emptiness dimension, and this is the reason why. So we need a huge energy input hatch, which we're missing two lightning charges for. And to make the lightning charges, well, we need impetus jewels, which is not the easiest thing to craft, <laughs> especially with all this stuff. So I'm hoping that should be the only piece we're missing for more lightning charges. It is, okay. So now I think we can get our huge energy input hatch. Oh, and remember those extra item input and outputs I made earlier on? By mistake for the liquid crafter? Well, we can use them for our laser acceptor now. And so now we're just short of the machine casings and the glass casings. Alright, so it took around an hour for all of the star metal to build up, but I was able to request at least 40 of these machine casings, and we also were able to request the glass casings. However, we do have to think about a place to put this, and this base has sprawled out quite a bit larger than I first anticipated. The footprint here in the base is getting absolutely huge, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if we want to go any wider. I would actually like to start to clean up some more of the areas. I was thinking also about moving these abyssal craft things. This seems like a, a very large waste of space right in the center of our base here. I mean, we don't really use these things that often. I thought they would have been used more, to be honest, when I first set them up. But we could probably do with tucking these away in some corner somewhere. And we can repurpose this space for something a bit more frequently used. So I think that's something we'll do tomorrow, actually. And I was thinking about doing it on a live stream. So if you're interested and can make the live stream tomorrow, it'll be our usual time of 12 until 5. Hopefully no crashes. I haven't crashed since the last stream, so... <laughs> and that was like two weeks ago by now. As for this big laser multi-block though, I was actually thinking we go underground here. We have a lot of dead space that's underneath these processing machines, just under the floor here, that really isn't being used for much else. Plus it will give us easy access to AE channels. So yeah, I think I'll probably dig that out between episodes though. Right now we're just waiting on these things. <laughs> oh man, these compressors. And to help speed this process of the star metal up a little bit, we can replace this collector crystal, which has terrible stats on there, with a max size celestial collector crystal. And this should dramatically increase the rate of change here. Oh yeah, that's, that's a noticeable difference. Oh yeah, it's almost instant now. I should have done that a long time ago actually. <laughs> However, this is still going to take ages to make. <laughs> we have like thousands of platings to make here in the compressor. So I think we're just going to end the episode here. We will come back tomorrow for a building live stream and we'll probably be doing some upgrades to Batania as well. I'd quite like to upgrade our Runic Altar setup there. So yeah, that is going to do us for today. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.